everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Stamp and Chat. It is Friday night, flashback Friday, so we're going to be using some old stamps and an old technique that I came across on my YouTube channel when I was uh, looking for some fun things to do. It is PJ night, and I got this. It looks kind of just like a t-shirt, but, but I got my sleepy headband on here and I am ready for a pajama party tonight with you guys. I hope you all had a great day. Today in Wisconsin, it was absolutely beautiful weather. Uh, must, must have been about 70 degrees out there. Felt like a beautiful spring day and the sun was shining and uh, lots of good things are happening. I have some good news to share with you, especially those of you who are still waiting for your orders. We are still at about 14 to 15 business days, but on Monday, our staff comes back. So this weekend, we are redoing everything in the whole building, kind of making stations for everybody, making sure that everybody is going to be social distancing. And uh, But I'll tell you, the girls that work for us, they are amazing. They can really get orders out fast. So I'm sure it'll take a little bit to get used to the new system, but we should be much faster with a full staff back and all of our wonderful people that assemble our products and make everything. So I'm really excited about that. And I can't wait to see them. Even though I can't give them a real hug, I'm definitely going to be giving them a cyber hug from across the room. Well, I wanted to talk about our topic tonight. So our topic, for those of you who, who've seen this before, we always have a little topic to talk about. Tonight's topic is catastrophizing and forecasting. So catastrophizing and forecasting, they are very, very hip terms in the uh, therapy world today. Ask me how I know. And these are two things that I do all the time. And you know what? I should have thought about this a little bit better because I'm very distracted by the fact that this blue doesn't match this turquoise, this teal blue. Sorry about that. So catastrophizing and forecasting, we all do it. I know we all do it. It's not hard to do these days. It's easy to kind of think of the worst case scenario. And um, I, am, I am great with that. I've been I've been doing that since the beginning of time. I can't tell you how many times my kids have come to me and said, mom, can I do this? Or mom, can I do that? And I immediately go to the worst case scenario. You know, mom, can I go to a party? Oh my God, you know, there's gonna be this and the cops are gonna come and <laughs> like the worst case scenario. And I know a lot of you do it too. And especially right now, as we see things opening up, a lot of us are catastrophizing and we're forecasting. So catastrophizing itself means kind of overthinking things and you start to create problems that aren't even there in the first place. And forecasting is predicting the future. And even the forecasters who predict the weather with all of their fancy equipment only get it right half the time. So forecasting doesn't work. Catastrophizing doesn't help. So when you, when you overthink things, you do start to create problems that aren't even there. And a lot of what we build up in our head are just stories. They're not facts. So the thing to do that I've learned is to just try telling yourself self a new story with a happy ending or a successful finish or that things go really well. We tell ourselves stories and we start to believe them. So why not tell ourselves good stuff? So one of the things that I was doing a little research on catastrophizing and forecasting, and I found this list of questions that you can ask yourself. And there's three really good questions that you can ask yourself when you start to do this, because it creates a lot of anxiety. I know it does in me. The first question is, am I 100% sure that that's what's going to happen? Well, you can't be because you don't have a crystal ball. How many times has this actually happened before? Well, most of the time it's never happened before and that's why you're worried about it because it's new and you're nervous. And is this based on the way I feel? Is this based on facts? And if you ask yourself those three questions, hopefully you'll be able to start telling yourself a new story 
with a happy ending and a successful finish. So tonight we're going to play with metallic cardstock and we're going to play with embossing powder. Now I saw a couple questions in already kind of going on in the chat where you guys were asking, am I talking about cardstock? Am I talking about foil? Am I talking about glitter? You know, you can use any kind of shiny cardstock that you want for this. You can use a glitter cardstock if it's smooth. You can use a foil cardstock if you want, or you can just use a metallic cardstock. And that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Gina K Designs metallic gold, silver, and copper cardstock. But there's lots of great ones out there, and I know we're out of stock on all of those. We have more coming, but I did ask Heidi from Simon Says Stamp to jump in because maybe she can link a few for you guys that she has in her store that will work really well with this technique too. The other thing we're going to use is some background stamps. And I have a couple here that I just love. I'm going to use this one. This is our Petite Flourish background stamp. I'm going to use this one for a couple of samples. Another great one to use is, let me see, I've got my, all my background stamps in this little bin. This one is the Rose Lace one. Oh, I love this one. It looks like roses and it looks all lacy and stuff. This is a great one to use. I'll do one of them in this texture. And then another one that's really pretty is this delicate snowflake. That'll work really well. Also the, um, what's this one called? This one is called uh, Elegant Script. This one. It, you cannot read the words because they're not really, I mean, it's like doctor's handwriting, you know what I mean? <laughs> the way they used to write old prescriptions where you couldn't read it, but the pharmacist for some reason spoke that language and could read in that same language. That's the kind of script it is. So you can use it for anything because it's not a love script. It's not a friendship script. So it'll work for anything. So those are some really good choices for this technique. The other thing I'm going to be using is the Gina K Designs War and embossing ink. You can also use Versamark for this. Any embossing ink that you have will work great. And then to make my card tonight, I think I'm going to go with the Elegant Asters stamp set. I love this butterfly down here and some of these greetings, so I think this might be a good one for this card project. I'm also going to be using some dies, so I think I'm going to use our ovals dies. These are the double stitched over, single stitched over here and the double stitched over here. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. I'm going to kind of lay it out as I go along. Again, this is as much as I've prepared for. I also wanted to tell you about something new that just came out and I did a video on it today. And that's over on my YouTube channel. It's a brand new regular style video, not a live. And it's this stamp set by the Stamping Village. This is called Thinking of You. And you guys know that Gina K Designs is part of the Stamping Village. And 12 of the companies that are part of the Stamping Village, there are more than 12, but 12 of them joined in to create a stamp set together. And this is called Thinking of You. And the ones that I designed are right here. So these are perfect little wreath builder stamps. Actually, all of these little stamps in here, the coffee cups, the heart, the flower, the bee. There's so many great options in here for the wreath builder. But mine are open designs. So if you don't have any wreath builder stamps that you can color in, this is a great set for that. And I just want to tell you what we're doing with this stamp set. So the Stamping Village believes in giving back to the community and we'll be donating $5 of every Thinking of You stamp set to the Save the Children organization. They're on the front lines right now supporting children during COVID-19 to deliver meals to families that struggle with food insecurity. So we are donating money from all of all the companies are donating money both on their wholesale sales of this. So if you buy it from Simon Says Stamp, money is even on those sets by the Stamping Village. And um, this is just a great set for your collection. And who doesn't need all these brand new greetings in your collection? You can always use great greetings, especially right now when you're making so many cards. So I wanted to show you that. And I also wanted to show you, I made this cute little tag with it in my video today. And I show you how to stamp a wreath on a tag. It's a really cool 
refilter hack and you're gonna like it. And I also added this card in at the end so you'll be able to see that in the video up close as well. I just made a little wreath card with it so you could see how it looks. So I wanted to show you that because it is brand new and because it does benefit Save the Children. All right, so let's switch to overhead. So let me show you, I've got the um, Petite Flourish background stamp here. And I have a few pieces of cardstock. Now, this our gold metallic cardstock. It has a sheen to it. It's not a sparkly cardstock, but it's definitely metallic. Same with our silver. It has a sheen to it. And our copper as well. So if you have something like this, it'll work great. If not, you can also use a real bright metallic kind of cardstock. So I'm gonna get my paper cutter here and I am going to cut out a piece of the silver and I'm gonna cut that at three and three quarter inches by five inches. And then I'm gonna cut a gold one the same way. I'm just gonna do all these now. Cut a gold one the same way. And then I have a piece of copper that I'm gonna cut. And I do have some samples of this that I had at Creativation and I dug them out and I have those to show you with some of the different embossing powders on them. But let me show you how to do this. I'm sorry my name is cutting his lawn right now and I don't know if you guys can hear that. It feels really loud here. So let me know if you can hear that. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my goodness. You know, that's the live thing, right? You can't control it. Now, normally when I do my voiceovers, I go up in my bedroom closet and I close the door and it's really quiet in there and it's really dead in there because there's clothing. Um, here in my stamp room, I've got wood floors and walls that are bare and so there's a lot of echo, but that's okay. We can make it through. Hopefully it's not too distracting. So here are the three pieces of cardstock that I'm starting with and the background, sorry about that. Yes, sounds of spring, I love that. My window is closed. Let's start with the silver. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use silver with the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Silver Embossing Powder. And I'm going to start with the Embossing Magic Pad, and I'm going to rub that all over the surface of this silver cardstock. Now, if you have a glass mat or you have a sticky mat or even just a countertop surface, these background stamps have cling on the back. And if you put that down onto your glass mat, it will stick. So you don't really need to worry about an acrylic block for these. I just have a piece of cardstock here on a very dirty mat, but I'm still not gonna use, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's gonna be fine the way it is. Now I'm going to take some of the Gina K Designs Embossing and Watermark ink, and I'm gonna ink this background stamp up really well. I wanna get it nice and juicy. And embossing and watermark ink stays wet longer than other ink, so you don't have to worry if you're not, you know, really super speedy at this technique. You can take your time. It's just, you have to get it all inked up. I prefer using background stamps on their back and inking them up this way. I just think it works better. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the embossing magic on here. I'm gonna turn that upside down and I'm gonna just touch it to the one side and let it drop. Then I'm gonna get another piece of cardstock and I'm going to put that on top and I'm going to rub my hand all over. I'm holding the cardstock still so it's not shifting around under there with this hand. And this hand, I'm just rubbing it all so it's making contact with the entire background stamp. If you struggle and you get shallow spots on your cardstock when you're using backgrounds, this will eliminate that problem. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift that up and I have embossing ink all over that. Now you can't see it, but I can see it. So now I have a little piece of folded cardstock here and I'm going to get my silver embossing powder and I'm gonna sprinkle that all over this silver cardstock. The silver on silver is spectacular. So think about cards like when you're trying to make cards for a 25th wedding anniversary or even a wedding. 
I mean, this look is just stunning. This, let me just blow the excess off. This is quite an amazing look. So I'm gonna put this down for a second and I'm gonna get rid of all this embossing powder. Do that. And I'm going to just sprinkle this into my trash can. Get rid of that excess. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my Wagner heat tool. If you get embossing powder where you don't want it, you can use a little brush to brush it away. Um, I have a little bit in some places, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Now I like to heat up my heat tool a little bit before I actually start to use it. It kind of cuts down on the warping, but you can see the embossing powder on there, it looks gray. And that's a really nice way to see what light gray cardstock looks with gray ink. It's a really pretty two-tone look. But when I start to emboss this, it just, oh, it's so pretty. So I will turn this into the light so you can see all the prettiness. All right, so once I get halfway through, I'm gonna turn it around. And yes, I know, I always recommend a clothespin and then I never have a clothespin. But a clothespin, a wooden clothespin, not a plastic one or certainly nothing metal, but a wooden clothespin is really great for this because you can hold it in place. I tried tweezers, but I actually kind of got them too hot and the whole tweezer got hot and that wasn't fun. Okay, so now take a look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my word, I just love that look. Metallic on metallic is stunning. This alone, just like that, I mean, <laughs> I just want to send that, um, you know, with the greeting on it. But we're going to make a full-blown card because I have an idea that I want to try. And we're going to see how it looks. So there you go. It didn't work too badly either. So what do you guys think of the silver on silver? You think that looks pretty? I, I think this is the one I'm actually going to, to work with uh, for my card project tonight. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's do... Let's do the gold one. And I think my favorite gold is, let's see. I wanna show you these two samples from, um, no, I'll, I'll wait, we'll do, it, we'll do it as a surprise. Okay, so I'm gonna use the embossing magic pad again. And I'm gonna use this same stamp again. Should I, no, let me use, let me use, let me use the script. I feel like that one would be really pretty. Okay. So if you get a background stamp and you see any little white pieces on it, um, these are actually cut on a precision cutter and sometimes the little foam on the side just kind of flakes on there. So just get a soft cloth and just brush that away. I don't know why I have that on mine. I've used this one so much, but I guess it just kind of creeps on there sometimes. Okay, I'm inking this up really well again with embossing ink. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna turn this upside down and I'm gonna lay it right onto that cardstock right onto that background stamp. Now, where'd my thing go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna use that same piece of cardstock, and again, holding it down to secure it, I'm gonna rub all over the surface. I'm telling you, I have pressed and practically stood on stamps trying to get them to stamp well, and um, sometimes it's just hard, and it's not that there's anything wrong with the stamp, it's just so big. This really, really makes it easy. I know some people use a brayer, too, and that works, but I feel like I can do a little bit more pressure with my fingers. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift that. And then for this one, I'm going to use, you can use the fine detail gold powder, but I want to show you what brass band looks like. Brass band is really an underrated embossing powder. I don't use it enough, and you guys probably haven't seen it enough to know how pretty it is, 
but I have to show you this tonight. So brass band isn't the same amount of fine detail as um, the fine detail gold. But when you're doing something like this, I don't think it really matters. It just really, I just love the color up against this gold. So now you can see what that looks like. It looks like a hot mess right now. But let me put that aside and get rid of the brass band. That's what I say about every project that I make when you guys aren't around. Oh gosh, this looks like a hot mess right now. And then somehow some of them actually turn into something that's worth it. <laughs> but you know. Okay, so now I'm going to emboss this. This should be pretty hot. This embossing powder is amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. So brass band really looks like the color of brass instruments. Let me turn this and not put my finger in it. Where our fine detail powder looks a little bit more antique. So you can look at both and decide which one you like the best. But this brass band, like I said, it's really underrated because I don't use it enough, but it is absolutely spectacular. Let me just do a little bit more in the center here. Okay. Ooh, look at that. that. That looks like, that looks like a metal plate. That's so pretty. I love it. Oh, sorry. I just bumped the camera. Got too excited. Okay. So that's what brass band looks like. Now let me show you the difference so that you can really see the difference in the color between the brass band on the metallic gold and the fine detail gold. So here I use the petite flourish with brass band and I just love that look, right? Now here is the fine detail gold. Completely different, right? It looks, it's, you can see it better, definitely, like on camera here, but it has a whole different look than this. This actually looks like it's just pressed, coming like pressed from behind the metal, like embossed almost, and this, like dry embossed almost. And this one, it definitely looks like it's like foil stamped or something. So two completely different looks. Both are beautiful, but very different. So you definitely have to try your different embossing powders. Another one that's really pretty is this champagne one. So this one has a completely different look. So you gotta try them all. All right, so now we have those. And now I wanna do the copper. So the copper, we have a copper embossing powder and it's beautiful. And we have a rose gold embossing powder and that's beautiful. But I wanna show you the one that's widely overlooked in our collection and that is metallic blush. This color looks so dark when you see it in the bottle, in the jar, and you might think, oh, I don't want brown. Yuck, I didn't, I mean, I, you know, I wanted copper. I wanted something that's really gonna work well with the copper. Or you might say, oh good, I really want brown. And then you're gonna be disappointed because this does not look brown when it's done. So let's use for this one, let's, should we go all out and use the rose lace? Let's do that, why not, right? I've got everything everywhere here. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one with rose lace. So first, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to get that embossing magic pad going because I am sure by now I have embossing ink all over my fingers. So I'm probably going to emboss some fingerprints. All right. So, and yes, you can see that I've used this with white ink. I've used it with all kinds of stuff. You know, one thing that I do to wash my stamps after I use embossing ink on them, these big rubber backgrounds, and same with like pigment ink, I just take them into the kitchen and I use a little Dawn dishwashing detergent and a toothbrush. And I just brush them with a toothbrush and they come out perfectly clean. See, I was lazy here, but that really works well. And it gets rid of all the embossing ink, which can be kind of sticky. Okay, so. Here we go. We're going to do this and that. 
Okay, and then I'll get my cardstock again. Put that on top. Oh, I'm full of embossing magic powder. And again, I'm going to go all over the surface of this and make sure I get good contact. So, metallic blush it is. And then I do have a sample of the copper and the rose gold to show you. They look so different from this, from the metallic blush. And let me find my little piece of cardstock and metallic blush. All right, I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm winging a lot of this tonight, so anything can happen. Sounds like he's mowing the neighbor next door now. It's a good night to, to mow, I'm telling you. It's beautiful out there. But it's a better night to make cards. <laughs> okay, so now you can see what that looks like. Isn't that a pretty stamp? Oh, it's so lovely. I, I like this one so much. <laughs> now this one, you're going to lose a little detail with this embossing powder just because it's not a fine detail powder. But I still love the way it looks. Okay. Let me get rid of this before I start embossing. I'm always afraid if I leave the powder sitting on the desk in front of me that the heat from my embossing gun is going to emboss the whole thing. All right, here we go. This is like so surprising the way this comes up. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, the stamp really looks good too. This looks like a like a copper ceiling or something. It's amazing. Embossing on metallic cardstock is so fun. So fun. All right, almost done. Embossing is magic. <laughs> It really is. It's magic. I think if somebody hasn't seen embossing before, you could say, I want to show you a magic trick and just take a piece of cardstock and emboss and they will just go crazy. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh. So our embossing ink comes in an ink pad, an ink cube, and there is a re-inker for it too. I know a lot of people um, ask about that because you like to buy ink that you know you can get a re-inker for. And re-inkers are great. Even embossing ink is really great because let's say you have a snowman image. I'm just going to bring the other camera in too. So let's say you have a snowman image and you decide, you know what, I would like to have the buttons and his carrot nose and his eyes and maybe parts of his hat. I would like to have that in silver, a silver embossed look. You can dip a little embossing ink in a tiny paintbrush and you can paint those areas in with embossing ink and then use your embossing powder with it. So a re is really helpful for spot embossing. Okay, I just didn't wanna say that and have my hands moving all around weird and you wondering what I was doing. All right, so there is the, um, that beautiful metallic blush. Now I wanna show you rose gold. This is rose gold on there, and that's really beautiful too. But you can see it so much more, um, it's more vibrant. It almost looks, well, it's a different color, completely different color. And then I have a copper one over here. This one might be hard to pick up on the camera. It definitely, like when you, when you see the shine, it matches our uh, copper paper pretty well, but then when it's not in the glare, it looks more rosy, more pink actually. So it's kind of, kind of a, you get two looks out of it. But if you want just that metallic on metallic look, metallic blush is a great way to go. Okay. So that is what, and, and this looks, the blush, you can really, I don't know if you can see it, but it's really pink too. It's really pretty. 
Okay, so that is the, that's a bunch of different looks with the metallic on metallic. So I think I'm gonna make my card with the silver one because that was the first idea I had in my head. Oh, let me show you the other pattern with metallic blush. This is the other pattern with the metallic blush. I think that pattern's really pretty. And that's the Petite Flourish. Okay. So now for this, I want to, let me get a piece of black cardstock. I need a piece of black here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and then I'm going to use the butterfly image from this stamp set, this butterfly. So I'm gonna stamp a silver butterfly onto a black piece of cardstock. That is a striking combination. So I have my Misty here to do this because this is a bigger stamp. All right, my black cardstock in there and I'm just gonna stick the stamp on here and then I am going to stamp it. Okay. Let me get my embossing ink. I am totally, I've got everything everywhere over here, a million background stamps in my way. So I'm gonna use the same embossing ink for this and I'm gonna ink this up real well with embossing ink. Make sure that's in place. And then I am going to stamp it. Oh, I don't have a sleeve tonight. I really like having a sleeve because it glides over the top of the Misty. My skin has lotion on it, but we'll live. Okay, so you guys can see that pretty well. Let me get my Misty out of the way. And now I'm going to put silver embossing powder on that. And this is the fine detail silver, so you should see more of the detail in the butterfly with this. There we go. And then we're going to emboss that. So if you ever want to emboss metallic things like flowers and butterflies, try them with black because that is just stunning. Isn't that pretty? That's shine. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside and then I'm going to cut an oval. So I'm gonna need my die cutting machine for this. I'm gonna cut an oval. So let me get my die cutting machine over here and then I'm gonna switch to here Hi guys, and welcome everyone. We have so many people here on a Friday night. It's so great to see you all. I see people from all over the world too. That's so exciting. I'm gonna cut an oval using the Gina K Designs double stitched and single stitch. So I'm gonna use the double stitched one first. So the way I'm gonna decide that is I'm gonna Pick a greeting. I think I'm going to use this greeting, the follow your dreams. They know the way. They know the way. That's a really great graduation saying, isn't it? Follow your dreams. They know the way. So I think I'm going to do that on the medium sized oval. So with that in mind, I'm going to cut in black medium sized oval out of my cardstock. And this is the double stitched oval. So, a little bit of decorative edge to it. I'm not even sure that I need a background for this. This double stitched oval might do it all by itself. But now if I'm not gonna use that, I have to, I have to kind of look at it together. So I'm gonna kind of do a layout like this and I don't want it to be too big because I don't wanna lose a lot of the background. So I think I'll stick with this size. And I'm not gonna cut um, a single stitched one yet. I'm gonna wait and see how the card looks. If you guys think I need it, I'll cut it. But if you don't think I need it, I'm gonna leave it. I generally do um, always a layered oval, but I think this time, because of that background, I might not need it at all. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get my Misty again. And for this, I'm gonna actually flip this over. So I don't know if you guys know that this Misty, they make a mouse pad for it and that's what this is. And I always tack down my pad with some purple tape. This way it doesn't shift around. So I'm gonna use this side for that. I use the black side when I'm doing the wreath builder because it helps me really be able to see the template and you know distinguish the difference. It's harder to see on this lighter color, but if you're using a piece of dark cardstock, this side is really good. So I'm going to find my tape and I'm gonna just tape this down because I don't want it to move. Let me try to get it nice and straight here. It looks pretty straight. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna use a little embossing magic here. And then I'm gonna go with follow your dreams, they know the way. You know, all these sayings are really nice. You're such a gift to me, you are loved. They're great sayings for friendship cards and just cards where you wanna encourage people. Follow your dreams, they know the way. And I'm gonna put that more toward the top. And this is a very scripty greeting, so you don't have to worry too much about it being straight. It won't look crooked, even if it is a little crooked, because it's hard to tell what crooked means on this. Okay, so I'll stamp that. That looks good. All right, now I'm gonna pick that up and put some silver embossing on it. This is gonna be a striking card, I think. I hope. <laughs> so far, so good. Okay. The only thing that would be really bad is if I didn't realize that I had the oval upside down and I had the ugly stitching side. You know, there's a pretty stitching side on stitch dies and then there's the ugly side. Gotta always make sure you're not on the ugly side. All right, now let's get this out of the way once again. And I'm gonna emboss that. Hopefully this won't work too much, but if it does, I'll just put a lot of foam tape on the back. It's getting hot. All right, follow your dreams, they know the way. Yes. That's gonna be pretty on there. All right, so we're getting somewhere here. So now I'm gonna go back and die cut again. And this time I am going to die cut the butterfly. So I'm gonna cut him out, her out. What is under there? Okay. So I'm going to use the coordinating dies. This set has a set of coordinating dies and all of our die sets that go with stamps are um, on these magnetic boards and they're very strong. I mean, these, these dies will fly off of these boards. These boards, um, we have them custom made by Stampin' Storage for Gina K Designs. So they're really nice, they're nice and thick and they, you know, they stand up really nice, they don't flop around. So if you get a set of our dies, you're gonna get one of these boards with it. It doesn't come on our shape dies and it doesn't come on our single dies, but they do come with our sets. So I like them because then you can store your stamps and dies together. So I'm gonna use a little purple tape to tack this down. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'll just give you the play by play. So I'm going to tack that all down, just one little wing and then the other side. And hopefully it will be straight enough. I dropped my, my blue sheet of cardstock. And then I'm going to cut it. And so usually we see the white little edge around the die around the image, but here you have a nice little black 
edge. And that looks really cool, doesn't it? It's just different looking. I love it. It's real graphic. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. Just piling machines up. <laughs> Misties are under things. Okay. Now we need a paper cutter because we're going to assemble this card. It's a long card. Okay, so I'm gonna get another piece of black cardstock here and I'm gonna cut that down just an eighth of an inch smaller. So somebody was asking, what are my borders? Eighth inch borders or what? They're actually 16th of an inch borders. And the way you get there is, let me do my overhead camera. Here we go. Okay, so the way you get there there we go, come into, there we go. So I always go to the three and three quarter inch mark because that's what my bigger piece of cards, my smaller piece of cardstock is, my background. And then I just sneak it up to the one eighth bigger than that. That was almost there. And then this one is five, my, my silver one is five inches. So I'm gonna sneak it up to the five and an eighth inch mark. And that gives me a 16th of an inch border, which is really just the perfect little amount sticking out. So I'm going to tape this down and I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra tape because there's a lot of embossing on there. Let me get over my camera here so I can see what I'm doing. And this one, I don't know, maybe I cut my silver one a little small, but I always seem to want to cut a little hair off the bottom of the black. So I'm going to do that. Just a tiny bit. There we go. And that makes it look perfect. Oh, I love the silver. Kind of looks like tin foil. I tried embossing tin foil with an embossing folder, and I made a video about that. That's actually on my YouTube channel from a million years ago. And it was a pretty cool video. Um, it's just hard to, like, it's hard to tape that tin foil down. It was a little bit of a struggle. This kind of, and this looks better. All right, so I'm going to get my embossing buddy, and I'm going to make a card base. I thought I had a bigger one cut, but maybe I did not. Wait a minute. Let me just look around for a second, because... Here it is. I want to do a top fold. So this measures four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I'm going to score it at five and a half inches. This is just the standard A2 size card. And then crease it. We do have envelopes to match our silver and our copper and our gold too. It's nice to have that perfect match. Ooh, that's nice. What do you guys think? Isn't that just pretty by itself? You could put a big, beautiful, scripty word over that. The trimmer that I'm using is the We Are Memory Keepers trimmer, and I really like it, but I have to tell you that my favorite small trimmer is the Tim Holtz trimmer. So if you can get your hands on one of those, they are fantastic. Um, I have one at work, and... I use it there, but I don't have one at home. And this one I got, actually I got it, I think on clearance somewhere. So I liked it because of the pretty color, but I've had a little bit more luck with the Tim Holtz one cutting really well. Okay, so there's my card base. Now, I'm gonna just see, do you like this or do you think it should have some little border around it? Because I'm going to put this butterfly down here like that. I think that's really pretty. I think I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to tape this oval down right onto the card. And I'm using a lot of tape. And I normally don't use that much tape. But because this oval had a lot of embossing, it, it was a little warpy. So I'm going to stick that here. And then let me see if I have 
any of my black foam squares. Oh, I do, I do. So I have the black foam squares and they're really nice when you're popping up something black like this because when you look at it on the side, you're not gonna see that. It's kind of like, you know, wearing white underwear. <laughs> you kind of see it and it's a little shocking. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the black foam squares. And I don't know if you guys know, but our phone squares have this delivery system that is super cool. So it's got a tail on it and then you just pull the tail and the foam square just pops out. And what's nice about that is then your foam squares aren't loose. And when you throw them in the drawer, they don't get stuck to everything. They're still hiding in there. And then when I'm ready for the next one, I just pull the tape and it pops out one at a time. Love that. Okay, so let me pull these off. I feel like I should make other cards, but this card took me quite a while to make and that's because I was doing some demos. What I might do is I might show you one more background stamp. I could kind of angle it, that'd be pretty, but I feel like it needs to go straight up and down for some reason. And it could actually kind of go up over that. You know what, I'm gonna do that because I missed a little bit of the embossing powder there and there's my way to hide it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, move it over a little bit. Come on. It's hard to look on both sides at the same time. So what do you think? It's a fun card. Now for writing on the inside, this is a little tough to write on because it's such a shiny, um, shiny material so it's a little hard to write on so what i might do for this is i probably will just take another piece of black cardstock and i'll make that three and seven eighths by five and an eighth sorry for my handle being like right in the camera and then i'm going to get a piece of white cardstock and I'll cut this one down to three and three quarters of an inch, which it looks like it already is. Yep, to five. There we go. And then we could do something really soft on the inside. So why not? We've got a few minutes. Let's decorate the inside of the card. Okay, first I'll layer it all together here. And then, I'll get the butterfly again. I think the butterfly would be good for the inside. And let me get an acrylic block and really make myself a nervous wreck. Okay, so I didn't clean this, so I should probably clean this off with a tidy towel. I'm doing laundry tonight and I'm washing all of the black yoga pants that I've been wearing for the last 60 days <laughs> and I'm gonna throw all the tidy towels in there with them. And then I think I'll use some soft stone because soft stone is a nice gray and you can write in black over soft stone. So it won't matter if you write right over it. Okay. I think I'll just put this off to the side right here. There we go. So you could certainly write on top of it or just kind of write around it and sign down here. And then that will go on the inside of this card. And that makes it easy to write. And the thing that I like about doing this as opposed to writing right on the piece of cardstock is if you screw this up, I would write my message first and then attach it. If you screw this up, you can make another one and you didn't ruin your card. And then if you've got stamping friends like I do, I have lots of stamping friends, they could pull that panel out and they could reuse the card if they want. I was in a group of stampers back when I lived in the Madison area and we would um, send each other cards all the time. And we always talked about like how we would we would cut the 
top of the card off and mount it onto a new card base and send it on to somebody else. So we kind of honored each other by like, I love your card. I'm going to cut the front off. I'm going to add it and I'm going to send it off and re-give it. I'm going to keep re-gifting it. And um, I kept getting my own cards back. <laughs> People kept sending me my cards back. <sighs> so I'm going to just emboss this a tiny more. I feel like there's a little spot that didn't get completely embossed right there. All right. So there is my finished card, complete with an inside to match. Yay. So only one card tonight, but there was a lot of a lot to show. So again, I'm going to show you these backgrounds. This is the copper with the metallic blush. And here is the petite flourish version of that. And then here is copper with copper. Copper cardstock with copper embossing powder. Copper with rose gold. So that one stays pretty pink. When you turn it, it doesn't turn into copper. It just stays rose gold, which is nice. And then of course we have the silver. And then we have some gold. So these, this one is the gold. This is the brass band on gold metallic. And this is the one we made tonight with the elegant script. And then this is the fine detail gold, which is a much brighter, more vibrant gold. Oh, so much fun playing with all of these. I hope you guys had a lot of fun too. So we talked about catastrophizing and forecasting. I'm gonna do our best, right, going forward into the weekend and through next week to not blow things up, right? We're go I'm, I'm definitely gonna be working on this. Instead of telling myself everything that can go wrong, I'm gonna tell myself a new story with a happy ending and a successful finish. And I do have a quote for you about catastrophizing. I love that word, <laughs> it's such a trendy therapy word. So here's my final quote for the night. Catastrophizing is using your imagination to create something you don't want. Well, I hope you guys had a great time tonight. I hope you have your PJs on and you're getting in the mood to keep going tonight, having some more crafting time. So for Monday night, I'm going to be taking Monday night off. And here's why. I hate to take any nights off, but our staff is coming back on Monday. So I want to be there. I need to spend a lot of time there with everybody. I need to make sure that everything goes really well and everybody is safe. And if we need things that I can get things for people and I don't want to bug out of there too early, try to get home to get set up for a live. So I hope you understand, but I will definitely be back on Wednesday night for some Wednesday whimsy and I'll be back next Friday for another PJ party. So you guys, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful weekend. I love you all and I'll see you all again next week on Wednesday.